Hey guys and welcome back to part 2 of how to build a Kickstarter clone. So last time when we left off we had created our app that was listening. We created our utils folder which had our config with all our environment variables in one location. We created our own custom error class which extended the default class. We created our routes, our models, our error middleware, we connected to the Mongo database and we had up some controllers. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is something that I noticed before, I'm just going to quickly restart the server and run our npm run dev custom script that we created. And I noticed before that this is actually incorrectly named. It should be controllers with a T. So I'm just going to go name that and then it crashes. So if I go here, it should be controllers with a T. And we got it up. Okay, cool. So just had to fix that little naming issue that was driving me nuts as I noticed it. So the, the first thing that I want to do in this video is just have a look at how we're currently handling the database. So we have our own database set up inside the project models, which is connected to the Mongo database, I should say. But inside of the controllers, you notice that it's actually, we're talking directly to the database here. So the controller itself should ideally not be responsible for talking to the database, but rather just calling the various functions that should happen when we hit that endpoint. So I don't actually want this controller to do this await project or find, because if this is an error with project or find, we should have some sort of exception handling and error handling, and that shouldn't be part of what happens. That should be part of something that gets called by this function here. So that's what I'd ideally like to move it to. The other problem so far is that inside this project schema, we actually don't use TypeScript here and we can. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So inside of this project schema, is it actually project schema, Mongo schema? We can use TypeScript to declaratively tell what this schema should look like and it should interact quite nicely with our own types. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is build those types that I should work out with. So let's do a new folder, we can call it types, and let's call it, you guess it, project types .ts. And inside of project types, if you remember, we go back to our schema. Uh, so far inside this project schema, we've only got a title and some timestamps, and that's about it. There is also an ID field and a underscore underscore V that comes with Mongo itself. But so far as what we're inputting, we're only doing titles. So let's do export interface project type. And all it is is a title with a string. Okay, cool. So now we have our very basic project type set up. Let's look at how we can do the schema. So inside of our project models, Inside of our project models, we're going to say, and we just keep this here, it's going to be, uh, let's not do this, let's import the schema directly from uh, mongoose. And this way, instead of doing mongoose.schema, we can just get rid of that and go to schema directly. So that's going to throw me some errors because it should be a new schema. And inside of this schema, we're actually going to put in our brand new project type. So we're going to put in the project type. And it's going to automatically import it from types project types, which is this one that we just created. Okay, cool. So now if you notice, if I do like remove that and save it, it should throw me some sort of errors. Now Mongo itself won't throw me errors, but when I use this and use this type to create this object or to create this schema and then I call a new object for it later. So inside a project, if we like create a project, we can tell this handler what that project model looks like. That project model looks like the schema, but it looks like this type of schema. So that way we can use TypeScript later in our project. So we're going to do this. We're not actually doing anything. The only thing is I'm not actually going to use this as a model anymore. This is literally just a schema. So we are going to delete that and we're going to keep those two imports. And then I'm going to go here and just go export 
default per project schema. Uh, one extra thing. So when we create the schema, we're telling it all the fields that we're going to manually import. But the database itself, Mongo itself, is actually going to add, as I said before, that ID field and the version number field. But I don't really want to interact with the version field. I only want to interact with the ID field. because so that's going to be quite important for us later. So I'm going to export an interface of interface I project schema, which is going to extend project type, the original type that we have here, which is just the title. And it's going to have the ID, which is going to be a string. Okay, so now when I call this as a type, it's going to have underscore ID and title directly within it because it's going to have this underscore ID and that title. And I'm going to put it inside here with this schema because it's sort of related to the schema. It's not necessarily a type directly that we want to interact with. So instead of having this as models, because this is no longer just the model, this is now just the schema. So I'm going to basically copy this and let's go to our backend folder and create a new schema file. And inside a schema, let's call it project schema.ts. We'll paste it there. All right, so we're actually going to get rid of this now. And we're going to import model from Mongoose. And that's supposed to be a lowercase m. Uh, we're going to say const project model equals a model type. We're going to have it as the I project schema that we just created. And we're going to call it project project schema. We're actually going to import import that directly and update import perfect. And we're going to export default the project model. Okay, cool. So what we've just done is we've broken down the schema and the model into two separate things. So some people, oh, hang on, that's two R's. Let's get our naming conventions right. Project schema, project schema, perfect. Cool, so we've broken down the model into the model itself and the schema, which the model takes in as an argument. So it's slightly separated now. If you wanted to, you could put this schema directory underneath the models directory because only the models is ever going to talk to it. It's never going to be used by itself. I just prefer to have it separated out into its own folder along this sort of level. So now we've done those changes, let's have a look at our server. So our server is still running as expected. Let's just make sure that nothing's broken. So project.find is not a function. Okay, cool. So now project.find is not a function. And let's look at our controller. So we were awaiting project.find. And now we're not awaiting project.find because if we notice, we're importing the project model from the model's project model. And inside of the project model, we're not having our projects at all. So we should have project model. All right, so we just said that project.find is not a function. So project.find is not a function because as you remember, we're actually exporting project model. So if we use project model instead of project, and then we have to await project model.find, project model.create, project model, project model, and project model. And that's the last one. That's the last one. Okay, cool. So we try again, and it's still not a function because we just updated the syntax. So we are now exporting default this project model before we were having modules dot export equals. So we have to just change this and go, we're going to import the project model from the same place, but it's a different, uh, we get notes like that. And then let's go. All right, cool. Now we can get all our products that are coming through again. So let's just run through them all again. Duplicate key error, my yellow book. Cool. Get up the project model, all the valid ID. Let's use the valid ID, just check this again. 
Uh, ideally, we would update this to... Uh, Ideally, we would update Postman to automatically run all these sort of tests for us, but that's a bit outside the scope of this tutorial series at least. So you can have all of this just sort of run as an automation test, and then it would sort of save us a bunch of time to do this, but it's worth to just go over it at least once manually anyway, to just sort of figure out what you're doing wrong. All right, so now we've successfully merged the project model into two separate files, project schema and the project model, and we've created the type, and we've exported this interface with the underscore ID. So, what's next? Well, as we said earlier, I don't really like this fact that this controller is talking to the project model. That's not cool. But before we do that, let's take the time to add a little git commit. Um, separated project model and schema. Cool. Right, so this is going to be our next challenge. We're going to separate the logic that talks to the database and awaits the database and the logic that just calls different things. So for example, inside of this get projects, uh, say it was Let's say it was a little bit more complicated. Let's say that to get the projects, we had to first get the users and then make sure that the user associated with the project is the same as the user calling it. So we'd have to do two sort of database models and then we'd have to go, okay, uh, maybe we have to call a third party. We have to check that they have an, uh, let's say that we have to check that we've taken care of their expenses and all for Kickstarter, that's not say expenses. So that was sort of related to FinTech. Let's go that they have to talk about whether or not it interacts with a third database. So let's say, uh, oh, so let's use one of the Kickstarter uh, tiers. So let's say that we had to, for some reason, talk to inside this one route, this one controller that talks to one route, we had to go and fetch three different databases, one about the users, one about the T's and one about the projects. We do not, if we want to do that, we don't want to do, again, a lot of this await project model.find because after this project model.find, we also have to use that in a try catch block. So ideally, we would have this and then catch error like that. And then we'd also have like, uh, maybe, uh, maybe the error is a special type of error that we know about and we can count about. Error equals say 500, then we want to return a special error message. And if it's error equals 404, we turn a different one. And then this gets quite chunky. And then again, if we had multiple versions of this, it would get multiple things. And then not only that, if we're doing a try catch thing here, after we get the projects, we also have to try catch to get the users. So it will be try this and then catch this again. And then like that gets really stupid. I'm not even sure what's going on here. So instead we're going to separate everything that talks to the database directly, like this project model dot find, with its own try catch block into its own sort of separate uh, services folder. So I've seen it called both services and entities. I'm going to call it services because it's sort of a service that talks to the database for us. So inside of services, we're going to have a project service dot ts, and inside of this, we're going to do all the talking to the database that we already have. So we're just going to basically copy. Uh, copy that and then copy this. So that's our project file, but that has to be within a function and it's going to be an async function because we're calling another database. Um, let's call it, uh, what was that one? Project model dot find. We're going to call it get projects. Okay. 
and then this can go inside that. So get projects is actually going to take uh, no arguments because we don't need an argument for when we're just getting all projects, but we can declaratively tell TypeScript that is going to return a promise. And inside the promise, we're going to have project type. So inside, let me just fix that up real quick. Just get rid of that error. So inside a project type that we had before is this one with the title. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, return the I project type inside the schema, which would have the title and the ID, but we don't want to right now. And it's not only going to be a project type, it's going to be an array of project type. So that was just, if it was going to be one, this is just going to be, there's a multiple ones, uh, we also can just have it like this and have it like that. TypeScript will accept either. I always found it easier to just do this. Uh, that's just a personal preference. Feel free to use whichever one. They'll both work exactly the same. All right, so inside of this, and we're going to say project equals await project model dot find. And then we're going to return projects. All right, so that makes more sense. But let's add in our errors. So let's say try. Except we want to catch error. And we want to not throw error. We're going to throw, uh, what's this thing? Something like this, throw new error. Uh, projects not found, perfect. All right, so export and six function get projects, and inside of this project controller, when we get projects, hmm, that's actually the same name. So let's just think about it real quick. Do we want the project controller to be called get projects, or the project services to be called get projects? Because they can't both be, especially as a controller has to use a service. It's going to not like it. So get projects. I could call this get projects services or get projects handler. Let's call let's call this the handler because we're not actually getting the project. We're just handling the get projects. Um, cool. And then we said that was this. So that means that we're going to have to go here. All right. So const projects equals await get projects, and we're exploring that. Get projects. And it's not liking it to automatically import it for me, which is a bit sad. Let's export the handler because we changed the name. And then up here, we're going to have to import. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of them, none of them with by default. So we'll say get projects from services project service. Cool. And uh, if we're going to throw a new error, if there's no project found over here. So we only need to do a check over here. Mm. Oh, we should throw inside our services a new error if there's no projects. So if no projects, so say we do a successful database call, but it doesn't return any projects to us. We want to just throw a new error of no projects found. Uh, and that will throw errors if the database is empty, but that's okay, the database should never be empty. So that's okay with me. I just want to separate that by a line. Cool. So now everything should be fine. And we're still returning, so that's 200 projects. Okay. Let's see if we have ran into any errors. And we were getting all projects. All right, we definitely got errors now. Let's have a little look. Throw a new error message. Now to get requires a callback function, but an object undefined inside of no modules project routes. Ah, so that was an easy fix. So inside of project controller, we changed it to be project handler. We're exporting project handler, but routes is still using the projects itself. So then we just need to update those two. 
and dun, 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 dun. perfect. We're up and running. Let's have a look. Ah, it all works a lot perfectly, and we're separating it out. Okay, now that we've validated that it works for one, let's do a bunch more. So, uh, first things first, I'm going to call all of these the handler. I'm just going to go down like so. Put handler, and then let's update what we're exporting. And then inside of routes, let's update the names. Okay, and now hopefully we shouldn't run into any of those problems again. It looks like we're good. All right, so we got our get projects. Now let's do our create projects. So inside of create projects, uh, let's go to our services and inside of services, We're going to basically do the same thing. Export async function of create project and create project is going to take in an argument. It's going to be a uh, project to project type. Uh, yeah, we're going to return project to promise. Hmm, I was just wondering if I wanted to use that uh, suggested syntax for me. Project project type is going to be a project type and let's have a look what it says but we're going to do a try const new project so we'll wait project model dot create why is that hmm, that's not great interesting all right we're going to wait project model dot create with the project that we pass in yep if there's no new project then if there are any error projects not created and then return new project Catch an error, throw an error, project not created, sure. Why, oh, there we go. I was thrown out by the colors not being properly, but it seems that they fixed it since I pressed save and it formatted for me. That was slightly odd. All right, so let's go through it again. Explore async function, create project, project, which is a project type. We're going to the promise of the project type. And we're going to try to create a new project. If there's no new project, throw an error. Return the new project, and we have a little catch block. Okay, that's okay. Uh, and then let's do uh, create project, get projects, get project by ID, get project by ID, and we're going to have project ID is going to be a string. It's going to be a promise of a project type. Uh, this one, I actually think that instead of the project type, we're going to return the I project schema. And the reason for that is that the I project schema has the underscore ID, and we're going to use the underscore ID. So it makes sense to me at least to just use it when we return it. Alright, so we're going to say const project equals await project model dot find by ID with the project ID. Yep, and then if there's no project, yeah, if there's no project, uh, throw a new error, project not found, perfect. And we're going to return error. Cool. Uh, we're also going to throw this inside of a try catch block. Try. And catch error. Cool. So, just do the try catch block, and the catch block just says throw a new error, project not found. And if there's no project, after we do the module wait. I actually want to separate these two error messages so we know in the future we're debugging project not found. Uh, there's no project after it's successful. Hmm. Let's, what would be easier? Uh, instead of project not found, let's go uh, error finding project. And it's just 
it's literally just there so that if we run into this error later, I know which line of code it was. It was, it was there was no project found in, after we successfully called find, or there was a problem calling find in, this, in the first place. All right, and then after that, we'll do update project. So export async function, update project. Um, inside the update project, we're going to take in a project ID which is going to be a string, but we also need to take in a project itself, which is going to be project type to return promise, or project schema. Let's see what this does. All right, so the project ID is going to be the ID of the project that we're updating. The project of the project type is going to be what we're updating it with, because just because we're updating a project by the ID, we have to know what we're updating it with, aka there needs to be a new title. It's going to return a promise of the pro iProject schema, which again we use an iProject schema because we're using the ID and I kind of want to return the ID. All right, let's see what the suggestion is. Try update projects. It was a wait project model, find by ID and update. Project ID, project, new, true, perfect. And if we go to the controller, because this was the tricky one, we've got new. And inside the update, we did, yeah, ID, body, new, true. Perfect. So there are the three arguments we used. Project ID project, which is the same as where's body, because we had to throw in the body of the project. Perfect. If there's no updated, throw in an error, project not found, error updating project. Awesome. It uh, looks like it's learned like my preferred syntax because it's got two separate error messages here. That's kind of neat. Uh, and then we're going to export async function of delete project. Awesome. So you delete projects and taking project ID to be deleted, just trying to return a promise of well, we're not returning this, we're returning void because we're deleting it. Cool. So let's use this. Okay. Try project equals wait project model. We've got find by ID and delete project ID. If there's no project, throw a new error, project not found, return. And throw an error, error deleting project. Perfect. Uh, oh, we have the same error messages here. Uh, error. Getting projects. Error. Creating project. Cool. So that makes more sense that there's error messages if inside all the catch blocks. And then inside of all the try blocks because it's an error. We're going to start with the projects as the first keyword, and that makes it a little bit more logical, at least to me in my brain, when I'm trying to debug layout and there's error messages. Okay, have we skipped anything? Get a project, create a project, get a specific project, update and delete. Mm, no, nah, that sounds pretty good to me. Uh, let's go back to the controller and update it. It's to use all these wonderful new methods that we just created. So we're still going to have to do this sort of, if there's no body title, because inside of our service, when we, which one was that? The create project, cool. Inside of create project, we're actually expecting the project to be a project type. And if there's no title, that is not a project type. So we still need this bit. Um, and we'll get to that later. So, const project equals await, and we're not using the project model to create, we're doing the create project, important, and we're going to use the project rec.body, because the rec.body is what contains all the objects, including the title, and we're just going to rename that slightly for my sanity's sake, or create a project. And then we don't need to check that there's no created project because we're doing that inside this. And then we can go return 201 project created. Awesome. All right, project get project handler. Cool, we're still gonna have to check that because it expects inside of this, it expects the project's ID. It's gonna return a promise. So we're still gonna have to use that check. And then we're going to say await project equals await get project by ID with the same ID parameter. And then we don't need to go that error message 
cool. So let's slow me down a bit. Um, so we need to do that. Project is going to wait. Uh, what do we call it? <laughs> delete. Pff, delete project. Web ID. And we delete that. And then we say, cool. Project has been deleted. And inside of update, what's update? Update is, you can have a title, project ID. Await project model. No. Uh, we're going to await update project. And inside of update project, uh, what will the arguments are in real quick? We say project ID and project itself. So we don't need to pass that in. Cool. And if there's no project, we don't need that. All right. That looks a little bit better. Let's do our tests again. Create. Uh, 21, create, verifying, that's because we just deleted that one, that's cool, so get, update, and delete, perfect, all right, so that's a lot better now, because we've separated what's talking to the database, inside of, firstly, try cash box, which we didn't have before, with separate error messages, and it's all, modularize in its own sort of folder. But if you notice, we're still doing this and this, and that's something that I really do not like. So let's see if we can move it somewhere else. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of that because we're not actually having that anymore because that got moved over here. Cool. All right, so let's think about this. If we want to check that firstly, there's a title and then eventually, remember, we're not going to just have a title, we're going to have a title and a body and a description and some images and some owners and a whole bunch of stuff and we're not doing this every single time everywhere. And this is also a sort of standard thing that I don't really think we need. So let's do, yeah, let's do this first. So because we're doing this on everything that requires an ID, we just have to check that the ID is valid. Because if you remember from last episode, if we want to get a project by an invalid ID, it doesn't even try, it just says, oh, it's not a valid ID. So let's move this functionality. Um, this functionality, for when we're checking if the ID is a correct ID type for Mongo, it's a Mongo specific sort of check. It's not a individual model check. So if we have users and uh, users in tiers and projects, all of those models are going to use the same check to make sure that the ID is a valid Mongo ID. So because of that, I kind of want to put it inside of the database because inside of this database is where everything related to Mongo sort of goes. So we're going to have a function and we're going to call it um, check is valid object ID. It's going to take in uh, ID of string, perfect. And it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be a Boolean per se. And that's not what we're going to return. Uh, I suppose we could do that, but instead let's stick to what we're doing already, which inside of this, we just copy this across. Cool. Um, boom. Boom. And we need that. So if it's not a type of modular ID, blah, 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 is if it's not a valid ID, uh, let's throw a new error. And let's see what that looks like now. Cool. Uh, I still don't like that it's a 500 internal error because it's not really an internal sort of error, it's sort of an expected one. But that's okay because if you guys remember, we sort of expected this inside of our utils. In our HTTP exception, we can create our own error. So let's go over here. Instead of throwing an error, we're going to use our HTTP exception error. We add our import so he knows what it is. Cool. Uh, you've got three arguments, but I've got one because it wants status. And if we have a look at it, uh, status is optional, but message and error are true. 
Cool. So that's going to be the error message. And we're going to pass a 400 aka bad request status. And now we can go. Dun, 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 dun. Mm, doesn't like me. Okay. Why do you not like me? That argument for error is not provided. Um, an argument for error. Is that because. Let's have a look. Ah, that's because I think error is error or null error. Question mark? Nope. <laughs> error string or null? Yeah, because. Okay. Um, I suppose I could throw in null as a extra thing, but I don't really think it's necessary. Why are you throwing me this? Oh, because I updated error to be optional here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, status is optional up here, and we actually added this error mark optional here, but we actually want the status and the message and the error. So, the error over here is not required, it's actually optional. Because if it's not there, we're gonna throw null. Okay. Okay, cool. That worked. Alright. And perfect. No, no, it's not. Hang on. Oh, it's still returning a 500 message because we're not using this. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Where we're using this, which is here, we're just going to firstly uh, call. this with that and we have to update the import okay does it work for yes 400 bad requests cool um we could even throw this inside of this project id a string And it's a project ID. Okay. And go. It's perfect. And that way that our controller, if I just hide this, our controller is now really small. And if we wanted to do multiple things, we could in a very logical fashion. And we'll say, um, I don't know, user and uh, uh, reward T and we'll do all of that sort of stuff and it's all sort of very small and logical what's happening in this function because we're actually throwing all the nitty-gritty stuff to this separate controller oh sorry it's the, from the controller to the separate service so let's update everything to do that uh, this one And this one. And then inside of our services, we just gotta do that for this and for this. Okay, so just to summarize what we did, we used to have that whole argument multiple times. We have now separated, it's now related directly to the Mongo because it can be used by different model schemas and it's related directly to Mongo. When it runs, we're going to say, okay, is it a valid type, which we were already doing manually inside of each controller step. Now it's sort of modularized within the database and it's going to be used by the services. So that way the controller can just control and call different things, but it doesn't have to worry about the logic of making sure everything's valid. And continue on in that vein, we don't want to make sure that everything's valid, which means we don't want this sort of stuff to be here. We want to move this sort of check inside of the services, particularly because we're doing it multiple times. And that's definitely something that we do not want to do ever. So let's just have a think about where we sort of want it to live. So we'll sort of call it, hmm, we're going to call it, uh, if it's Valid? No. Uh, 
Alright, let's call it sanitizer because that's basically what we're doing. We're going to sanitize the client's input. Um, before we do that, let's just always take a chance to get. Let's call it. Uh, what did we do just then? We we have our little book at git. What are we done with? Move. Ah. We created a services file. Cool. And created services folder. Cool. All right, so now let's create our own, and we're going to call it sanitizers. Sanitizers. And we're going to say project sanitizer.ts. Inside of project sanitizer, we're going to say export the function of sanitize project. The sanitize project is going to take in uh, the project. I like some of this, but not all that. That's pretty bad. Project type, we're going to import it. Cool. Okay. So we're going to say let sanitize project equals an empty array. Uh, but the empty array is going to be of the project type. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to take in a project that we are assuming or expecting to be of the project type and we're just going to run uh, our little checks and inside our little checks if we just go through we'll say this, um, I'm just going to leave it here, call it out so I sort of have that as a reference. Alright so inside of uh, size project dot title equals not this because we're not actually running any checks here. We're going to run a sanitize title check on the project dot title, and then after that, we're going to return sanitize project. And this way, we could have multiple fields come in, and each field has its own sort of function. So you'll sort of understand in a second when we go. To cool. Alright, so function sanitize title takes in the title as a string of and we're just going to return um, the string. And we're not returning trim, although we could trim the tile. Actually, we probably will trim the tile because trim just removes the white spaces. So if anyone had like spaces after they finish typing, like um, title equals hello space, it would remove that space and it would also remove this space. So that's a cool little function. All right, but we're going to say, Basically, this right. Um, let's do it. So, let's say, all right, we're going to do a bunch of different checks here. If title is equal to undefined, then we're going to throw a new error title is undefined. Um, and we actually don't want that to be an error because, as we remember, error is a 500. And it's not a 500 error, it's actually a bad request error. So we're going to say it's a, a, our custom error and it's a 400 bad request. Uh, if it, if type, no, if type of title is not equal to string, perfect, because we're expecting it to be string. If it's not a string, then it turns not valid. Uh, I think that's all for types because it has to be not be undefined, it has to be string, that's fine. Um, let's call attributes, and this is just where we can say title equals title dot trim. All right, cool. And inside of this, we can say if uh, we could say to title length equals zero, but that's actually not what I want. If it's say under three, because we have a, however long we want the title to be. And we go through new HTTP exception. No, oh, sorry. Perfect. Title must be at least three characters. Perfect. Um, and if title.length is say, what's the maximum? Say 
fifty. Title must be less than fifty characters. Cool. And then we can return the title and we're going to return it. Alright, so this is actually quite a bit more extensive because before we were just checking if there's no property title return an error and there it was that it's required and it was always a 400 error. So instead of that, we're actually doing if it's undefined, if it's a string, if it's less than three, if it's more than 50, and we're cleaning up the title with a white space file and string. So that's a lengthy sort of thing. And inside of this, uh, let's say, you know, standard size product dot description, standard size description, etc. And for every attribute of our model, inside of, again, our model, for every attribute inside of the schema, so we have like title, we have description, we have uh, blurb, we have etc, 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 different fields, we're going to validate each of those fields separately, and each field is going to just have its own sort of check to make sure that it's all as expected. And that's all going to be done by this one, which is going to be called individual functions. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So now all we have to do is just make sure that this is getting used because at the moment our project controller is not using this. So inside of the controller, and again, similar to when we moved the, similar to when we moved the check is valid object ID inside of the services away from the controller, I want to move all this logic away from the controller into the services. So I don't want the update to worry about that. So inside of update, sorry, let me let me rephrase. I don't want the update product controller, project handler, to worry about whether or not it's a valid update. I want that to be all within this sort of update handler. So inside of this update handler, uh, inside of the services update, I should say, and when we, so, we get the project ID, Western, we get the project itself that we want to sanitize check and return a promise. Firstly, we check if it's valid. Uh, yep, we can check if it's valid first. And then after we check it's, it's valid, we're going to say const sanitize project equals sanitize project of the project. All right, so that means that we're going to use the sanitize project first. and Remember that inside the sanitizer project, we do stuff like title trim. So we actually want to use that. So instead of this update project with the project, we actually want to replace all the project mentions with the sanitizer projects. Cool. So let's have a look how this works inside of update project. Update project, go. Air update input. I think that's because we deleted that project. Perfect. All right, so let's say it is undefined. Uh, must be at least three characters. Let's say it is false. It's not a string. Undefined. Oh, can't say it's undefined. We just have to. Yep. Sorry, I was thinking JSON for a sec. Um, what else do we check? Uh, title has white spaces, a bunch of white spaces, and it's also going to be four. Cool. And look, the title normally has white spaces because we've trimmed it. All right, so that seems to be working pretty good. So let's use this every time that we actually get in a project, which is going to be. Hmm, create project and is that everything I think it is real quick uh, projects create a project which we oh sorry we have to use this here perfect get project by ID update project delete project all right cool that looks pretty good to me so now we have our own custom 
sanitizer. So if we need to do any of this, we can clean this up. We don't use mongoose. We're not checking this valid ID. I'm just going to delete those. All right. If there's no body title, no, we don't need that. Thanks. So. Dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. All right. This is pretty clean now. So inside of our controller, we're literally just calling different services. So is this service a thing? Return the status, this service, this service, this service, return the status. We actually have two statuses, two messages within the JSON just because we want to tell project ID has been deleted. So that's fine. Then we go project delete. Message project being delayed because of, oh yeah, because we're not actually returning anything. So this await project to delete is actually returning a promise of void. Okay, there's nothing coming back to it. So when we call this controller, it's going to be a void thing here. So we're just going to firstly do that, and then we don't need to do this because we're not actually getting that back anyway. Cool. Then that way. Let's just quickly delete another project. Uh, boom. Yeah, but it's still sending a message, but we just cleaned it up a little bit. And looks like everything's pretty smick now. All right. So now we have our sanitizer, which just double checks the user input. And our services controller is firstly checking that is a valid ID, and then we're sanitizing the input if necessary. Um, so this is separated from the controllers, and we create our own database thing to reuse inside of models. We separated models from the schemas, and we have types now. So it looks like that's a bit of everything. I'm just going to wrap this up here. All right, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more updates like this. Uh, if you want anything else, please leave a comment below. I'll do my best to respond. All right. Have a good day and thanks for watching.